Money going down the drain. Seriously, homes with older toilets are wasting about 70 liters of water per person per day. That's 18 gallons or about four water cooler jugs. And what's even weirder is that this is usually the same water that comes out of your tap. That's a lot of wasted water. It does a number on your wallet, but also on our water table. There are a few products that can address this problem, like compost toilets and gray water systems, but today we're talking about something that should look pretty familiar, and that's dual flush toilets. So how much water do they actually save? How well do they flush? And how do you choose the best toilet for your home? Stick around while we answer these questions in our ultimate guide to dual flush toilets. Now before we get started, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button below to see more sustainable home improvement videos just like this one. Now let's get started. Let's start with the basics. Dual flush toilets have two flushing options. One flushes with less water for liquid waste and the other flushes with more water to flush solid waste. Some models have buttons while others have a lever that you lift up and down. Dual flush toilets perform as well and often better than so-called low flow or low flush toilets. Before 1980, a single toilet flush used five to seven gallons of water and often eight gallons or more. That's more than a full water cooler jug. From 1980 to 1992, toilets got more efficient and used about 3.5 gallons. In 1994, US federal law stipulated that toilets must use an average of 1.6 gallons of water or less. Today, the average flush volume of modern toilets, including dual flush, is about 1.1 gallons per flush. In a dual flush toilet, the solid waste flush uses about 1.6 liters of water while the liquid waste flush uses about half of that. This is right in line with other high efficiency models. I'll get to that a little bit later. When most toilets last 10 to 15 years and some older models flushing strong after 50 years, there are a lot of pre 1980s toilets that are flushing homeowners dry. Now, a dual flush toilet will save 60 to 70% more water than a toilet manufactured before 1994. And even more if you're replacing a model made before 1980. If your family flushes the toilet 10 times per day, expect to save about 8,000 gallons or 30,000 liters of water every year. The amount of money you save depends on the type of toilet you're replacing and how much you pay for water. If you're replacing a toilet made in the 80s and pay the average US price for water, you'll save about $24 per year. When a dual flush toilet costs about $100 more than the basic toilet, your toilet will pay for itself in about four years. Toilets manufactured and sold in the US can bear a few different labels that tell you about the water efficiency of the model. Ultra low flush or ULF labeled toilets use 1.6 gallons of water or less per flush. High efficiency toilets or HET use about 1.1 gallons of water. Dual flush toilets are a type of high efficiency toilet so they fall within, within this category. WaterSense and Maximum Performance Testing Program or MAP is a voluntary toilet certification that is performed by independent labs that rigorously test for performance and efficiency. If you want the most efficient toilet out there, look for the WaterSense and MAP labels on your model. Now, do dual flush toilets actually work? A common concern with dual flush and low flush toilets is that they don't work, meaning solid waste sticks around when it shouldn't. Let us know in the comments if this sounds familiar. One of the best things about the MAP label is that these toilets need to meet water efficiency standards while flushing at least 350 grams of waste. That's 12 ounces and it's more than enough flushing strength for the average home. When you say low flow toilet these days, often that means an ultra high efficiency or UHE toilet. Both single and dual flush toilets can be ultra high efficiency using an average of 1.1 gallons or four liters per flush. Some single flush toilets have that down even lower to one gallon or three liters. 
So don't discount single flush low flow toilets altogether. They don't call it the porcelain throne for nothing. The vast majority of toilets in modern Western homes are made of porcelain. Porcelain is what you get when you kiln dry a clay called vitreous china. But why has porcelain stood the test of time as the go-to toilet for when you have to go? Porcelain is easy to clean. It's hygienic and affordable to make. Not to mention it's super durable. So it's not surprising to see toilets that are 50 years old. The porcelain is glazed and dyed to a bright white so grime and germs have nowhere to hide. There are some parts of the toilet made of plastic, including the seat, flushing button or handle, and some of the internal mechanisms as well. These are often the first things to break on most toilets, but most parts can be easily replaced. Manufacturing a porcelain toilet is a lot like making a huge clay pot and requires demanding work. Most toilets are made in countries with lower labor costs like China and Mexico and are shipped to the US and Canada to cut down on labor costs. Some production is moving back to the United States, but for the most part, toilets are difficult to find close to home. So keep that in mind when measuring the environmental impact of your purchase. Now, besides the water efficiency of your toilet, there are a lot of other factors to consider. The height, for example. The trend these days is to have a higher bowl that's about 16 to 18 inches off the ground. This makes it easier to get up and down, but some believe that a lower bowl is also better for folks who need a little encouragement to speed things along. Now the shape of the bowl, round, oval, or square, this may seem like a trivial choice, but an elongated bowl is typically a more hygienic choice, if you know what I mean. Now one or two piece toilet, this just means that your bowl and tank are attached or separate. A two piece toilet is more common and more affordable. One piece toilets are easier to clean, sometimes have smaller tanks, and they normally cost a little bit more. Insulated tanks. Now, there's nothing quite as gross as touching a wet toilet. Insulated tanks don't have this sweating problem, especially in the warm summer days, so it's an option to consider. Now, the comfort factor. Raise your hand if you spend a good amount of time on the toilet. Either by choice or not, it's never a bad idea to try before you buy, just by sitting on the seat to see how it feels. Some toilets can get fancy with bidets, seat warmers, and even blow dryers. What used to be a rare luxury is kind of going mainstream. Let us know in the comments if a bidet or bidet attachment is on your to-do list. But what about wall-mounted toilets? Wall-mounted toilets are preferred by some folks because the tank is concealed, meaning your toilet takes up much less space and is easier to clean. When installed, the tank is mounted to the studs and covered with drywall, leaving an opening for flush buttons. One big downside to wall-mounted toilets is that they are much more uh, involved in the install process and can cost a lot more upfront. Some wall-mounted toilets are trickier to unclog or fiddle with finicky parts, so that's something to keep in mind when choosing a model. Have you already bought a new toilet and it isn't quite what you hoped for? Luckily, there are some retrofit kits on the market that allow you to turn single flush toilets into a dual flush. These kits even work for very old toilets. Keep in mind, however, that these converted toilets won't perform quite as well as a brand new dual flush toilet and can be tricky to install for an inexperienced uh, um, plumber. Now we know that using a dual flush toilet will save more water and put less stress on your local water table, but are they worth the investment if it's a question of dollars and cents? The short answer, of course, is yes. Dual flush toilets are among the most efficient toilets you can buy and will pay for themselves in about four years if you're replacing a really old toilet. Dual flush toilets also give a little extra flushing power for solid waste, so you can be extra sure that your toilet will perform as intended. And that's our guide to dual flush toilets. Let us know in the comments below if your home's dual flush toilet has your back or if you're ready to take it to the dump. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below and also check out buildwithrise.com, the only place to turn any home improvement project into a sustainable one.